Let's give the Lord some praise today. Thank you, worship team. Wasn't this a great team tonight? I mean, they could have did worship anywhere in the whole world. We should have had 100,000 people in here. You guys would have did a great job with them too. But it was great. Um, I'm so glad that every one of you showed up tonight. Tonight's a, tonight's a real serious subject because we're going to learn how to walk in the spirit. And, and, and just because you're a believer and just because you're talented and gifted doesn't mean that you're walking in the spirit. Also, you could be a leader in this church and you could be walking in the spirit and at times not walking in the spirit. Uh, there, there, you could actually be on fire for a season and then be cold for a whole nother season. Uh, we must know, and I think if we don't know how to walk in the spirit, we might think this is a whole bunch of luck. Like right now I'm feeling it and, and other times I don't feel it. And then you start judging, well, um, I'll, I'm, I'm moving in the spirit when I feel it and I'm not moving in the spirit when I don't feel it. But walking in the spirit has nothing to do with feeling it or not feeling it. It's a decision and we're gonna have to learn how to walk in the spirit and become, become mature believers. If you're here for the first time, uh, you might understand this. You walk in your flesh. There's a, say, there, there's a saying right now that the person walks in their feelings. You're, you're in your feelings. What, what that means is that your feelings are taking over your life. They're dominating your emotions. They're dominating your thoughts. They're dominating your actions. You're in your feelings. But when you're walking in the spirit, you're dominated by the spirit. That means that the spirit is directing your thoughts, the spirit is directing your conversation, and the spirit is directing your actions. How many understand that? That we can get to the point that we learn how to walk in, not in our flesh, but we learn how to walk in the spirit. So tonight, uh, this teaching is, of course, is going to be for every one of us, but we're recording it and we're sending it to our whole church. This is, this is capping off the series that we did on the Holy Spirit. I, 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 I think we, we, we just, we need to, we can spend a whole year talking about the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is, is with you. But I'm going to say this, the Holy Spirit, if you're a believer, he's in you. And, and if the Holy Spirit's in you, there should be some evidence of him in you. And, and that's what we want to talk about. Like, okay, well, if he's in me, how come I'm not, I'm not experiencing, it, it looks like I'm still walking not much different than I did before or things aren't changing. I don't, I'm not seeing the supernatural. I'm not seeing power. I, I'm seeing, I'm, I'm going in and out. I, I feel like I'm backsliding all the time. Pornography still has a hold on me. Lust is still has a strong hold on me. What's going on? And what's going on is that we haven't learned how to walk in the spirit. That's all. Just because you're a believer and, and you might be struggling with something doesn't mean you're not, I want you, if you're struggling with something doesn't mean you're not a believer. If you're struggling with something, doesn't mean the Holy Spirit's not in you. It just means that you don't know how to walk in in step with the Spirit. How many times? Walk in what? Step with the Spirit. You know how to walk in step with the lust. You know how to walk in step with the porn. You know how to walk in step with your anger. You know how to walk in step with the weed. You know how to walk in step with the pride. You know how to walk in step with the gang. But you don't know how to walk in step with the Spirit yet. How many understand that? So we can learn how to walk in step with a lot of stuff. But we're going to have to unlearn how to walk that and then start walking in the spirit. But, but this is the key. Once you learn how to walk in the spirit, the other stuff is going to, the other stuff's going to start fading away. I'll, we're going to cover that in a minute, okay? Some of you are trying to stop the lust and that's not going to be your answer because I don't care how much you try to stop the porn, try to stop the lust, try to stop the anger, try to stop that. That's not your answer. The Bible, it's more than trying to stop something. You need to start something. You need to start walking in the spirit and then all that stuff's going to start fading away, okay? So we're going to get this. We're not here to fake it as Christians. We got to finally become, and I'm talking to myself, we got to become Christians that walk in the spirit. People need to see real deal, Holy Spirit filled and led believers in the last days if they're going to be convinced that God is real. I'm going to get that. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you. I thank you for every person that's here today, everyone that's watching online, everyone that's going to watch this sermon. We're going to learn how to walk in the Spirit tonight. And I thank you, Lord. It's going to be intentional. We're going to learn something. And by the end of this sermon, we're going to be on track to know you better than we've ever known you. We're going to be on track to love you. We're going to be on track to be used with power and might. We're going to be on track to see your fruit 
you have the, the spirit the fruit the fruit of the holy spirit being produced by the holy spirit in our lives and father we're on we're going to be on track father god to transform and but you transform our lives and we going out there and bringing transformation through the power of the holy spirit everywhere we go in the name of jesus we pray amen thank you guys i want to just start off with some foundation someone say foundation we're going to talk about some three foundational truths about walking in the spirit and when we're talking about walking in the spirit i'm going to do one review and the review is how do you get the holy spirit truth number one every believer Every believer receives the gift of the Holy Spirit the moment they are saved and born again. The moment you give your life to Jesus, this wasn't you joining a club or joining a gym or, or joining a church. This was God joining you. This was God's Spirit coming inside of you. It'll change your life. I remember, I remember uh, uh, dealing with a, a young lady that she was, her, she lost her mind is when we first started the church. And um, she was, she lost her mind totally. And I began to counsel, I was counseling her and I began to talk to her. I go, what happened to you, baby? How did you even get to this point that you're struggling so much mentally? And she said, I used to be the, uh, the head cheerleader at my high school. I, I had great grades. Uh, and grad night, we, grad night, I got invited to a party. And she says, that, that I, when I got invited to that party, I, I took drugs for the first time. I took a drug that I never, I don't even know what it was. They gave it to me. And from that point forward, I was never the same again. My mind was gone. He goes, I, I, I couldn't think straight anymore. I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't function anymore. That night, what happened to her, she opened her, herself up to the demonic realm. And she didn't realize it was more, that, that, that night more than just getting high was going to happen. She was going to open herself up to a demonic realm and demons were going to come into her life and take over her mind, take over her life and destroy her completely. It was 10 years later and she was homeless on the street, this young lady with one bad experience with the devil. But I want to let you know there's a, there's a power and there's a spirit that's greater than any devil that's coming to your life through the, through the decisions that we've made. And it's the power of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit, come on, just one encounter with the devil can mess up your life. Imagine having one encounter with the power of the Holy Spirit invading your life. We, we got to get to the point that we're not just okay being in church. We got to say, God, I want to be on fire for you. I want to be filled with your spirit. I want there to be evidence within me. This is in Acts 2.37. It says, Peter's words pierced their hearts. Now, Peter's preaching. And the purpose of his preaching is to bring, bring the good news of Jesus Christ to sinners. Uh, uh, Peter was not preaching a whole bunch of goody two-shoes people. He was preaching to some sinners. He was preaching to some people that needed to be saved. And he really gave them the truth. He told them, you know, Jesus died on the cross, but you know who put him on the cross? We did. You did. It was your sins that put him on that cross. But he loved you so much that he died on that cross. Then he resurrected from the dead. And whoever calls upon the name, name of the Lord will be saved. So after hearing the preaching... They started realizing, they started getting conviction within them. Something has to change within me. Peter's words pierced their hearts. And they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God. This is review, but you can never come to God until you admit, that you admit your sin and be willing to repent means we're willing to be to turn from it. Do you know why some people can't ever get filled with the Holy Spirit? They still they come to Jesus, but they keep their pet sins. It's like they empty every pocket, but they don't empty their back pocket. Yeah, for real, I emptied everything. What about your back pocket? Don't that's none of your business, the back pocket. And I wonder what you have in your back pocket that makes you think that you really tried God, but you still have a back pocket Christianity. And you're experiencing religion, 
and you're experiencing maybe some goosebumps being in a room like this, and maybe you come in this room and you feel a little better, but there's a problem. You're still not filled with the Holy Spirit. And then it turns into a struggle because we start teaching you how a person that's spirit-filled should live, and you're struggling saying, I can't live that way. And understand this, we can't live that way without the Holy Spirit. To be holy and completely sold out to God, you're going to need God in your life. This is not a mental conversion. This is a miracle that happens when we repent of our sins. This is what happens when we're willing to let go of the sin. When we're done and we break up with the devil and every pet sin that we got that makes us feel a little better. This is when, this is what happens, you, and you turn to God. Understand this. You cannot turn to God unless you turn from your sin. So if God's over here, and I'm still walking towards my pleasure, my sin. Understand, the reason we love sin, because sin is fun. Maybe never, no one's ever told you that. You and I love sin because it's pleasurable for a moment. But then after you indulge in it, it leaves you down and depressed. It rips off your dignity. It rips off your honor. It rips off your future. It rips off your confidence by the time you're done. And then what happens, you get so down, you get in a cycle. Well, I need a little bit more touch of the sin to make me feel better because I'm down. It's time to break that cycle. And realize that tonight, no matter what sin that you be, keep going to, it could be a guy, it could be a girl you're going to, it could be, it could be a drug, it could be gambling, I don't know what you go to, but until you stop going to that thing and make up your mind, I am done in the name of Jesus, I'm turning to God, I'm living for God. The Bible says when you turn to God after you turn from your sin, you'll be, get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, understand, if you don't repent of your sins and you get baptized, you just go underwater. Uh, 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 dr when you go underwater, you went, before you went underwater, you went underwater a dry sinner. And after you go underwater, you come out as a wet sinner. But nothing changed. <laughs> You're just wet. How I wonder how many people got baptized in this baptismal and all they received, they just got wet. And we thought it was a conversion. And we thought it was a sign that you were done with your sin. But I wonder how many people got baptized in that baptism. And by the time they were done with that baptism, they didn't go, come on, they, they went right back to sleeping with their girlfriend. They went right back to getting high. They went by right back to getting drunk. They never had a pause in their life. They just got baptized. And I'm not saying you got to live a perfect life, but you got to get to the point that you're done with your sin. And the thing that you're struggling with, the biggest struggle you got and I got is I'm not done with it yet. Are you guys still with me? So after, <laughs> after I repent, I get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of sins. Then my sins are forgiven. That's great news. But understand, your sin, my, you or my sins are not forgiven unless, unless the Holy Spirit has taken me to a place that I'm done. I'm done. God, see, stop. The, say, God, take away all the porn. God says, that ain't going to happen. Take away all the temptation. It ain't going to happen. We're going to have to make up our minds. I'm done with this sin because you know what we're tempted for with? What's already in us, what we've been feeding. And the more you feed it, the more the desire grows. But I got good news that you could be forgiven of your sins. You and I could be cleansed of our sins. We could get delivered from every demon and attachment of the devil. And then we could get filled with the power of God to make us like God. We could live a total dedicated life to God. Hey, man, am I talking to anybody today? Come on, we got to get this. Because if we don't get this, we're faking it. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So now, at the end, someone say then. After I repent of my sins, I'm forgiven of my sins. And then I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Tonight, if you're not sure God's Spirit is... See, it, it, there's one thing about believing in God, 
But there's one thing about having God. The Bible says he who has the son has eternal life. He who does not have the son does not have eternal life. Today before I got here, I was, I was talking to a young, la- not a young lady. I, everybody's young to me now. She was not young, but she was young to me. But, but she, she said, she said I go, uh, I, the conversation always gets there somehow. Uh, do you go to church? She goes, well, um, me and my fiance, we're planning, we're, we're starting. We go to church once in a while. Do you have a home church? She goes, well, this is the problem. She goes, he's a Christian, I'm a Catholic. And I told her, I go, you know, you got to throw all that stuff out. Because nowhere in the Bible does it say, you know, um, you, know, uh, uh, you got to be a Catholic or you got to go to this church. You got to throw all that out. Do you understand what this is all about? This is about a relationship with God. The question is, do you have a relationship with God? Do you love Jesus Christ? Are you saved? Do you know if you were to die right now that you would go to heaven? Understand, we're not talking about a religion. We're talking about a relationship. And then I said to another person that was in their waiting room. And I talked to him. And I go, you know what the Bible says? He goes, what? I go, the Bible says there's a scripture that's super scary. And I'm going to tell you what it is. It says, Jesus is going to tell some people on the day of judgment, depart from me, I never knew you. You know what he said? He was a business owner, has this awesome business, and he goes, you know what he told me? He goes, that's deep. You know what I told him? That's as deep as it gets. Because if you don't know Jesus Christ, come on, and his spirit is not inside of you. Come on, we're not talking about being associated with the church or the way world outreach. Some of us are name dropping a church instead of name dropping Jesus Christ. I See, I don't know by hearsay. I know Jesus. His spirit lives in me. Well, how do I know his spirit lives in me? It's changing my desires. It's changing my thinking. It's not that I don't get tempted. There's another voice. I just can't do that without conviction no more. I'm no longer the life of the party. Even if I try to party, uh, I destroy the party with my depression. I got God's spirit inside of me. I feel when I sin. When I sin, I feel that I'm grieving the spirit. Sin no longer makes me happy. Sin makes me sad. I'm starting to hate my sin. I used to love my sin. But the Spirit of God in me is messing with my desires. He's messing with my thinking. The Spirit of God is in me now. And now I can't continue sinning like I used to because I feel the sadness that the Holy Spirit feels. Are you with me? The Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God. Say this, say this, believers. The Spirit of God lives in me. Someone might say, well, I'm a Catholic like she did. That's not where you get, when you stand before God, now God's not going to ask you, are you Catholic, Baptist, or non-denominational? The only thing that's going to matter is whether you know Jesus. And whether you've been born again, whether your sins have been forgiven, and you made Jesus the Lord of your life. Because if you made Jesus the Lord of your life, there's something that happened. You received the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the reason you can't go to hell anymore, because the one in you can't go to hell. You're not saved because you're so good. You're saved because of the one that's in you. It's his spirit that saved you. Are you guys still with me, church? You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's the divine nature of Jesus Christ. The, the nature means that you're, me and you are born with a sin nature. That means we have a propensity that we lean towards a sin. And, 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 and many of us, lead, you, you had a precursor, and the precursor was your family line. Your bloodline. So your bloodline, their bloodline, and their sin line was passed on to you. And you might not even met your father, but 
when people tell you about your father, they start telling you, you're like, like, a lot like your father. Some of the same weaknesses he has, you have. Some of the same struggles he has, you have. You know, I know you didn't meet him because this is not about upbringing. This is about, this is about a nature. So before we come to God, we only have a sin nature. But after we come to Jesus, he fills us with his spirit. And he gives us a new nature. Now we could be like our heavenly father. Because I got his DNA in my spirit now. It's leaning me. It's created to be like Christ. And, and I'm finding myself. I'm not perfect, but I'm telling you, something's happening within me. I'm changing. I'm being transformed. And I'm not giving up because what's in me, whatever God started in me, he's going to complete in me. God's spirit is in me. And he's not going to let me go. Hallelujah. Okay, now. The Holy Spirit is the power of God, the ability of God. It's the love of God. It's the fullness of life. It's eternal life. When I have the Holy Spirit, I got all of God. I got all of God. I got the power of God. I could access the wisdom of God. I could access the provision of God. I could, I could, I could access the ability of God. Why? Because God's in me. This is going to wake somebody up today. Because you've been trying to be a Christian, leaning on your own self-discipline and strength, and you're failing miserably. I promise, Lord, I'll do it this time. He's like, you don't know nothing. You can't do nothing apart from me. You need to be saying something like this. I can't do it, Jesus. I need your Holy Spirit to help me. I can't overcome this without your spirit. I know I'm a failure without you, Lord. I'm an addict without you. I'm a pervert without you. I'm angry without you. I'm inconsistent without you. Holy Spirit, do your work in me. Put, I want your nature, your, your nature to take over my life. Can that happen? Now let's look at this. We're going to get into this, the deeper parts of this. But every believer must now, just because you have the Holy Spirit, truth number two Every believer now must learn how to walk in the Spirit. You can have the Holy Spirit and not walk in the Spirit. So you have the Holy Spirit, but you have to learn how to what? It's just like if you got a bike, it doesn't mean you know how to ride a bike. Right? So you get a bike, but then you have to learn how to ride a bike. Just because it's kind of like being a baby, right? A baby's born with legs. But he's not... He has to learn how to use those legs and learn, learn how to walk. When you become a believer, you're born with the Holy Spirit, but you have to learn how to walk in the Spirit. You could be 20 years into this and still not be walking in the Spirit because you didn't learn how to do it. So there's a learning process, and there's a lot of practice in this. And in Galatians 5.16, it says, this I say then, walk in the Spirit. Say it with me. Walk in the Spirit. Why would he tell them to walk in the spirit? Because they needed to be commanded to walk in the spirit. Because if they weren't commanded to walk in the spirit, to continue walking in their flesh or walking in their lusts or walking in their old ways of living. No one needs to teach you how to walk the old way. You could pick that right. Right now, I know some of you guys are X this, X that. I guarantee all you need to do is backslide one moment and all that language comes back, that walk comes back, the attitude comes back, the anger comes back, the lust comes back. Everything comes back because it's part of your sinful nature. No one needs to teach you how to do that. Amen? Come on. No one needs to teach me how to do that. Be prideful and angry and fight. I don't know what to teach me that. I mean, without the Holy Spirit, I'm... I, I, now I might be getting knocked out everywhere, but back in the day I'd be knocking people out. I'm just kidding. You understand? I, without the Holy Spirit, I, I'm 50 some years old, and I, all of a sudden, without the Holy Spirit, I go through a midlife crisis. And I just start walking a little different when I come to church. What's up, Mark? Pastor Mark, I don't know. He started limping. Is it that knee? I don't know, man. It seems like a different walk. That could happen to me, that could happen to me tonight. 
If I don't continue walking in the spirit and no one has to teach me how to be a player. No one has to teach me how to lust. No one has to teach me how to be hungry for the things of the world. But to walk in the spirit, I'm going to have to learn how to walk in the spirit. Come on. Even though I have the power of God, I'm going to have to learn how to walk in that power. Does anybody want to be an on fire, powerful believer? Truth number three. The only way. Say with me, the only way to overcome the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes is to walk in the spirit. It's the only way. If we're walking by the spirit, that means the desires of the Holy Spirit are in control and leading us. If we're walking by the spirit, that means the desires of the spirit are leading us. If we're walking by the Spirit, our mind is controlled by the Spirit. We're thinking about pleasing God. That's why we're walking in the Spirit. I'm thinking about pleasing God. I'm thinking like Jesus. When I'm walking in the flesh, I'm thinking like my old self. And I'll say this, I'm thinking like the devil. You still with me? The Holy Spirit... When you're walking in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is leading you. And this is the truth. Either lust is leading you, the flesh is leading you, or the Holy Spirit is leading you. But both aren't leading you. The dangerous thing is that you're still gifted when you're walking in the flesh. So you start thinking, my gift is still working, therefore I must be in the spirit. I'm still prospering my business, I must be in the spirit. Don't mistake your temporary results for your, don't look for proof there that you're walking in the spirit. Because those things come and go. And a lot of us, I'm telling you this, any one of us could fake it. You guys know what I'm talking about? I've been there. Walking in the flesh the night before I'm going to preach. I remember when I was a teenager, walking in the flesh, watching stuff I shouldn't be watching. I did repent before I went to the pulpit. And I'll tell you this, I preach as good as I ever preached. I'm going to tell you why I preach, I think, the best I ever preached. Because I repented of my sin. I really believe that. But the, but the idea is I couldn't, I couldn't do this, fake it, and then still preach right. And say, oh, my God, I guess it's grace covers it all. Be careful that you're applying grace and you haven't even repented. Grace is not for the unrepentant sinner. Wrath is. Okay, let's keep going. Maybe we never heard that in church, but let's, let's take you there. But look at this, in Galatians 5, 16, look at this promise. Walk by the Spirit, in NIV, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. If you walk by the Spirit, you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. It doesn't say stop sinning and then walk in the Spirit. It says that start walking in the Spirit and you'll stop the sinning. Because the greater does, look, it says, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. That means there's a war, desires, desire war. And there's a desire that wants to become king of your life. They're fighting for the throne of your life. And whatever desire is in control of your life is what you're walking in. When the spirit of God is Lead in your life. The desire of the spirit are leading your life. So now we got to figure out, well, how do I walk in the spirit and make God's desires, the Holy Spirit's desires, king of my life? Amen? You guys got this? Okay. I'm going to give you three ways to do this. Number one, make walking in the spirit a habit. Say with me. Make walking in the spirit a habit. We will never walk in the spirit without making the decision to walk in the spirit. I mean, I want you to understand this. This is not your, you're not going to walk in the spirit just because I, you come up here and I pray for you and I zap you. You might fall out in the spirit. 
We might do a deliverance on you. All that might happen, but after you get up, you're going to have to make a decision. I, I had developed some bad habits, but there's a new habit I'm developing today. And this habit is following Jesus, following the Holy Spirit intentionally. It's not a habit right now, but it's going to be a habit. Walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. And this is how it says, this is how you do it. Seek him. Someone say, seek him. Wake up in the morning. And say, see, I'm, gonna, I'm seeking you, Holy Spirit. Just say it like that. I'm seeking you, Holy Spirit. Understand, if you're not seeking after the Holy Spirit, you're going to be seeking after something. How many ever woke up in the morning with an evil desire and it's like taking over as soon as the morning hits like, and you're just like, boom, running towards that desire. It's taking over. And be responsive to his guidance. Someone say be responsive to his guidance. So we're going to have to learn how to be led by the Spirit. That means we're going to have to seek him intentionally, and then we're going to have to be responsive to his leading. Okay? So this morning, as I wake up, uh, one of the things that I knew I needed to do was just come to church and go to my office while nobody's here and just spend time. I, the Holy Spirit's leading me. You got to spend time with me. You got to spend time with me. So I got here, and I just... Just spend time praying, studying, reading, writing things that God has shown me for right around two hours. But I needed it to be in the spirit. Now, if I, I'm not saying, you might not have two hours. You might have 15 minutes. Or, or you might have a half hour right before work. But let the Holy Spirit begin to lead your day. You'll never have the leading of the Holy Spirit until you finally say, Holy Spirit, I seek you. I seek your guidance. I seek your leadership. I want you to guide me today. That's part of walking in the Spirit. And then you start, as the Holy Spirit's telling you stuff, you're just moving. So then, then the Holy Spirit gave me some more instruction. There was a phone number I had in my, my briefcase of someone that's sick. He goes, call them right now. So that's being led by the Spirit. So then I call them right now, right? So it's little by little walking in the spirit. So now I, 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 after I'm done with that, he goes, okay, it's, it's okay to go home now. Let's go along with the rest of the day. Would you like to hear the Holy Spirit direct you like that? Go ahead and have some lunch. But when I was having some lunch, the Holy Spirit was leading me because, well, I went home to have some lunch, and then I, my flesh wanted to turn on YouTube. And there was nothing wrong with YouTube, but the stuff I was going to watch had nothing to do with the spirit. And there's nothing wrong. I said, what would I watch? I watch stuff on politics, and then I watch a, a whole bunch of stuff on cars, and then I watch a whole bunch of stuff on fighting. UFC, cars, and politics. So I'll be watching. But, but if once I get on that line, I'm not in the spirit anymore. I'm like, oh, man, they're so dumb. What? Right? And I'm not saying there's not a time to watch politics, there's not a time to watch a fine, there's not time to look at cars, that's if it's a hobby. But there is, there's not the time to look at politics and the time to walk, I mean, to look at cars and the time to look at the UFC is not when the Holy Spirit's saying, don't do that. What I want to do is put on some worship music and what I want to do while you're eating, I want you to meditate on me. You guys understand that? Can we do it? And I'll tell you, once I did that, the desires of the spirit are strong. I'm more patient. Like stuff that, you just think that would get on my nerves was like, that ain't nothing. Right? I'm aware of the opportunities around me when I go to that business. I'm over there. I go, we're going to have a Holy Ghost intervention here. I started counseling the person who was running the whole place. Right? All that stuff's happening because I'm in the spirit. But it all started with me seeking him in the morning. I'm going to have to be intentional about this. And then I want it to become a habit. You know what that means? You never develop a habit without practice. Someone say practice. To walk in the spirit means to follow and regulate one's life, thought, behavior, according to the spirit's leading instruction. 
to seek the qualities of Jesus, associate and be friends with the Holy Spirit. A habit is acquired behavior pattern regularly followed until it becomes almost involuntary. What it means is that you could get in a habit of following the spirit where it gets, it gets to a point that you're not even thinking about it. You're just walking in it. Wouldn't it be great? Like, I mean, I'm not even thinking about walking. So I just wake up in the spirit. Now it's become a habit to spend time with God. It's become a habit to say yes to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, I'm, see, what the, what the scripture is saying here, stop, fo- stop focusing on saying no to the devil and start focusing on saying yes to God. Amen? It makes it easy. Because, see, when you're walking in the Spirit, you're walking in the fire of the Spirit. You're walking in the fulfillment of the Spirit. You're walking in the contentment of the Spirit. You're walking in the wisdom of the Spirit. And when you're, when you're fully satisfied with the Spirit, the flesh has no power over you. Amen. Come on. You got, are you still with me? It takes a lot of practice to develop a habit of walking in the Spirit. In 1 John 3, 22, it says, we receive from him whatever we ask because we watchfully obey his orders. I want you to understand this. Part of walking in the Spirit is obeying his instructions. It's his lead, his impulses. But the benefit of walking in the Spirit, this is what he says, when you hear my voice, I hear your voice. He goes, when you watchfully obey my instructions I'm giving you on a daily basis, when you pray, all your prayers will be answered. Stop expecting for God to answer your prayers and you're not answering his prayers. Amen, come on. There's big dreams inside of you. There's big vision inside of you. You are called to do great things. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. We don't need to be like Christians that the Bible talked about in the last days. That they have a form of godliness but they deny the power thereof. He goes, from such people turn away. We're not Christians that look trying to look Christian. We're Christians that are led by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the power that guides you is a power that begin to work through you. The level of your submission is going to determine the level of power and, come on, and wisdom that you're going to walk in. Look what it says. Because we watch the obey his orders, observe his suggestions and injunctions. That's why we receive whatever we ask for. Because because why do we receive what we ask for? Because we watchfully obey his orders, observe his suggestions and injunctions, follow his plan. That's why for us and look at this, habitually practice what is pleasing to him. We've got to practice what's pleasing to him. Until you practice what's pleasing to him, it'll never become a habit. In order to practice what's pleasing to him, I'm going to have to stop practicing what's pleasing to my flesh. Amen? If you're gay, (laughs) you're not going to outgrow your gayness. You're going to have to repent of, uh, of homosexuality. And admit it's a sin, be willing to turn from it, and then God will forgive you of homosexuality. Then He'll fill you with His Spirit, and then you're gonna have to make a decision from here on out. I'm no longer seeking the pleasures of my flesh, I'm seeking to please God. And the moment I make a decision to seek after God, please God, what's, act, what's in me becomes a get, starts getting activated. And the desires of the Holy Spirit start taking over my mind, start taking over my desires, start taking over my actions. And this is what happens. The desire to please God is so much greater than desires to please my flesh. Something happens. There's a takeover. But you cannot not overcome any sin, including that sin, without, without walking, yielding to the Holy Spirit. Your power to overcome is not, in, is not you, your discipline. You're not going to white knuckle this. This is how you overcome whatever propensity of sin that's in you. You're going to have to learn how to walk in the spirit. You're going to have to get to the point, I love God. I seek God. And then what you feed, the appetite grows. 
And whatever it's that appetite, this is what happens when your appetite grows. This is what happens. Whatever you're feeding, whatever you're feeding, you start taking action on. Has got that? Someone say, walk in the spirit. Habitually, does your, does, how do you want to talk? Pleasing him. It's not easy. We're going to have to be aware of this, though. I'm gonna, man, this is, I was expecting the Holy Spirit to do everything. The Holy Spirit will do everything with your cooperation. But he's not going to do it for you. He's not going to turn off YouTube for you. If it's your will, God, when I press the button for the TV, make it not go on. And I press it, it's on. It must be God's will. Let's watch it. Let's go, UFC. If it's your will, make that girl not be at work today. I've been flirting with every every day. Make her not show up today if it's your will. As she shows up prettier with the best perfume she've ever had, looking nice. And then you had an argument with your wife. Oh, man. God, where are you? He goes, this is not how you overcome sin, dummy. <laughs> you got to learn how to walk in the spirit. May that drug dealer not be there when I buy, want to buy the dime bag of weed. May the marijuana place that, that told me I'm, I have depression, may they be closed when I drive by. You're praying the wrong thing. You're praying for the devil to stop being the devil. You pray for the devil to stop being the devil. He's not going to stop being the devil. You're going to have to start being holy. And you're going to have to make up your mind, Lord, from here on out. I'm waking up in the morning and I'm seeking your presence. I'm seeking your will and the, the habit I want to develop. I want to develop a habit of doing everything I can to please you. And if I develop the habit of pleasing God, by come on, by, by default, I break the habit of the sin. I break the habit of the weed. I break the habit of the lust. I break the habit of the anger. The new habit breaks the old habit. Stop trying to break a habit without the new habit. Amen, you got me? All right, number two. How do you walk in the spirit? Number one, make walking in the spirit a habit. Someone say, make it a habit. It's going to take a lot of practice, right? Habitually practice what is pleasing. I'm going to practice pleasing. You know what practice means? Practice means, it doesn't mean perfection. It means even if you miss a ball and it goes right through your legs, you say, give me another ground ball. Let's go. Am I, am I, this one might hit you in the chest, fall down, give me another one. Let's go. And the coach says, you know what you need to do? You need to, the ball's playing you. You need to charge it. If you don't charge the ball, it, it's just going to eat you up. So the next one, you're, you're charging a ball, boom. Oh, yeah, I got one. Okay, okay. The Holy Spirit is proud of you in every single one of those circumstances. He's not proud of you when you finally catch the ball. He's proud of you because you're practicing what's right. You might have fought, fallen, but it's, it's okay. Come on. Get back in the game. The Holy Spirit, come on. You're developing a habit. I know this isn't easy, but I've given you my spirit. But there's going to be a day that you're going to mature, and this is going to become second nature to you. Amen. I'm getting better. Not always I walk. I, I'm practicing this stuff. I don't got all this stuff all together. My wife sometimes gets on my nerves. And I have to walk in the spirit. I don't feel like walking in the spirit. I feel like, what? Anybody ever happen to you like, I'm just saying, I got to practice this stuff. I can't just wait till I feel I got to practice. I'm bobbling a little bit and I have to catch my, have you ever caught yourself mid-sentence? And you go, never mind. She goes, what? No, nah, you don't want to know. You don't even want to know what's coming out of here. What's ready to come out will destroy you. Come on, that ever happened to you? Or some brothers in the church? Or sisters in the church, right? But you have to, like, you got to catch yourself. 
He said, no, 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 I'm not practicing that. That old lifestyle that I was practicing led to depression. That old lifestyle that I was practicing led to destruction. That old lifestyle that I was practicing led to addiction. That old lifestyle that I was practicing led to lo lost. That old la lifestyle of practice was destroying everything I was touching. That old lifestyle that I was practicing messed up my mind. That old lifestyle I was practicing was destroying my body. I'm done practicing sin. I'm done with allowing the devil to dominate my nature. I'm I'm done in the name of Jesus. I'm going to walk in the spirit because I can walk in the spirit because the spirit of God lives in me. I can. The habit, I want you to get this. We've got to practice. Someone say practice. Number two. Focus on making the Holy Spirit, your best friend. Now, this is totally different. Like, because I think we, we don't, we think the Holy Spirit is power, a force, an entity. But he wants to be your friend. The crazy thing is, the Holy Spirit wants to be your best friend. Your partner. Let's look at this. Look at this. What the Holy Spirit offers you. The greatest gift he offers you is friendship. This is why some people can worship God like they're, they're, they're worshiping God out of their shoes. Because they love God. This isn't just another song. This is an expression of a relationship that I have with the Lord. This is not religion. I got a relationship. I know Jesus Christ. And not only do I know his spirit... The Holy Spirit is my best friend. I'm telling you this. He might not be your best friend right now, but how is he ever going to be your best friend if you don't nurture that relationship? This is how you walk in the Spirit. You walk with the Spirit. How do you walk in the Spirit? You walk with the Spirit. How do I, how do I walk in the Spirit? I walk with the Spirit. That means I, I'm in agreement with him. I'm friends with him. I wake up in the morning and I say, Holy Spirit. And some of you guys think, well, that, isn't that kind of sacrilegious calling Jesus to make the Holy Spirit your friend? It's a relationship. He wants to be your best friend. And he's for you more than anybody's for you. He's not here to condemn you. He's not here to put you down. He is here to enhance your life. He is there to be there in the thick and thin. Even when you fall, he said, come on, son. Come on, brother. Come on, get back up. Come on, we're friends. I'm not going to leave you right here. Come on, friends don't leave friends. I'll stick with you. My friendship is bigger than brotherhood. There's a friendship that sticks closer than a brother. Look at this. The Holy Spirit offers us friendship. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. Look at this. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Look at this. The Holy Spirit gives you grace. I mean, Jesus gives you grace. Unmerited favor. May God's love, the, the Father gives you love. And the Holy Spirit's friendship be yours. What does the Holy Spirit want? May the Holy Spirit's friendship be yours. You know what that means? Fellowship, companionship, to share what one has with someone. We say this, when you're friends, you share what you got. And what God is saying, I want to be your friend. And everything I got, I'm going to share with you. And I got a lot, the Holy Spirit says. As a matter of fact, I got everything. This friendship has a lot of major, major benefits. Because everything I have, I want to go ahead and pass it on to you. It means partnership, having the same mind. It means blessing one another. Good friendship blesses each other. When I'm a friend of God, he blesses me, but I bless him. I bless him by walking with him. I bless him by not forgetting about him. I bless him by communicating with him. I bless him by talking with him in the morning. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Let's do this today. When I go to work... I'm asking you, Lord, to be with me. Be fav God's favor to be on everything I touch. Draw your blessing into my life. I can't do this without you. And you know, I'm having a hard time with my marriage because I'm a knucklehead. But God, the Holy Spirit just changed me. Make me patient, so not so angry. Lord, Lord, right now, I just thank you, Lord, that 
Today I yield to your spirit. My goal today is to please you above everything. What's the agenda for today? I got a pen and paper. Let's start thinking about what we're going to get done today. And we're going to write this thing down. Today's going to be a really good day because with you helping me, this is going to be a profitable day. This is going to be a day we're going to progress. This is going to be a day that you're going to download your wisdom, your leadership, your ideas into me. This day will be a win. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being with me. Because not by my nor by powers, by your spirit. I thank you. There's only so much I could do. But I thank you, Lord, that what I can't do, you can do. And I thank you, Lord, if you're with me, who can come against me? Let's go, Holy Spirit. Let's do this. Use me, Holy Spirit. Talk through me, Holy Spirit. Walk through me, Holy Spirit. Heal through me, Holy Spirit. Do your thing, Holy Spirit. Amen. Being a friend. Now, I'll say two things about being a friend. The deeper, okay, so. There's some practical ways to build our friendship with the Holy Spirit. Um, spend time with him. Seek him in a secret place. Practice being in his presence. Through studying his word, writing down revelation, praying, meditating on his word, write down prayers. Listen to worship music. Hear the word or sermons. Um, go to church on a regular basis. Fellowship with other believers. Stay connected to godly content and intake. Whatever we fill ourselves with is the point I made. We'll build an appetite for and eventually take action on. So fill yourself with the right content. Fill yourself with Holy Spirit content. And stop waiting for you to feel it, to do it. Start the morning with Holy Spirit content. Maybe you have to be intentional about what you're going to watch, what you're going to listen to. Maybe the night before you say, these four videos I'm going to watch. I want to hear this preaching before. But, but uh, this is what I'm going to do when I'm working out. This is the music I'm going to be listening to. I'm going to pre-program the music in my, in my, in my phone or, on, or in, in, on, on the, in the car. I, I, these are the scriptures I'm going, to, I'm going to open my daily growth book. I'm not going to start until I do that. And when I'm in the car, I'm going to listen to a Christian book on, 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 on audio. But you start thinking about your spiritual walk. And these steps are practical ways of you spending time with the Holy Spirit. And they'll be fruit of the relationship. And the fruit of, your, of you being in the presence of God this is look at this but the fruit Galatians 5 22 but the fruit of the spirit the result of his presence within us is love an unselfish concern for others joy inner peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control it's the result of his presence someone say the result of his you don't produce the fruit of the Spirit. You spend time in the presence of God and the Holy Spirit produces it. The Holy Spirit produces the joy. The Holy Spirit produces the peace. The Holy Spirit produces the love. The Holy Spirit produces the kindness. The Holy Spirit produces the patience. The Holy Spirit produces the self-control. It's a result of being in the presence of God. So when I'm in the presence of God, I'm nicer because I'm in the Spirit. I have more self-control. I'm not lusting after every girl that passes by. And I'll tell you why. I'm not feeding my, not, my flesh. How are you going to not lust if all you're doing is watching lust, lustful content? Well, I got a problem. No, you don't got a problem. You got an intake problem. Stop expecting to be spiritual with no spiritual intake. I'm so proud of you showed up tonight. How many know this is some intake tonight? How many know this is some intake tonight? How many are receiving some from, from God tonight? Come on, we're going to make a habit of pleasing God. We're gonna, come on, we're going to start. We're gonna, right now we're going to make a, a decision. The Holy Spirit is going to be my best friend. Say it with me. The Holy Spirit will be my best friend. And the last thing, allow the Holy Spirit to speak and minister um, to others through you. So we walk in in the Spirit. You allow the Holy Spirit to walk through you or work through you or speak through you. You want to walk in the Spirit. You cannot say you're walking in the Spirit and you don't tell nobody about Jesus. I'm walking in the Spirit, but I don't tell nobody about Jesus. The Holy Spirit, this is, this is what he does. He glorifies Jesus. So when you're walking in the Spirit, you glorify Jesus. Look what it says. In Acts 1, it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Someone say power. power. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem 
in all Judea, in Samaria, and you will even tell other people about me from one end of the earth to the other. What's the proof that you're walking in the spirit or full of the spirit? You tell people about Jesus. But when, you're walk, when I'm not walking in the spirit, I don't tell nobody about Jesus. <laughs> right? If I'm not walking in the spirit, when I go to that place of business I went to today, it's just a transaction. I'm not even aware these people are going to hell. I don't even aware, I'm not even aware that this is an appointment for them. And God brought me there not just to do business. God brought me there to tell them about Jesus. And when I'm not walking in the spirit, I'm impatient. McDonald's is not even fast enough. You know what I'm doing when I'm not walking in the spirit? I'm complaining how slow they are. And I'm talking to the next person. Instead of witnessing them, I'm telling them, do you remember back in the day when McDonald's used to be fast? And they go, oh, yeah, man, I don't know what happened today. All this technology, they're getting slower. I know, what are they? <laughs> when I'm not walking in the spirit, when I'm not walking in the spirit, everybody gets on my nerves. Like, like you're dumb and you're dumb and you're stupid. <laughs> you ever had one of those days when you're not walking in the spirit? When you're not walking in the spirit, every girl looks good. We're not walking in the spirit. <laughs> Ever been there? No. <laughs> like every girl, like, she, she, no, she does look pretty good. Right? But... <laughs> We're not walking in the spirit. Come on. When you're not walking in the spirit, you're a dog. I'm a dog too. Amen. Come on. And then I, then I get condemned by, and I'm a dog. Oh, my God. I, I'm no good. And God said, no, no, I had nothing to do with that. My spirit is in you. You just don't practice walking in the spirit. You don't tell nobody about Jesus. When was the last time you witnessed? How are you going to see the power of God flow through you if you don't let the power of God speak through you? And the last thing. God gives us the Holy Spirit. So this is God's Spirit. And God gives us the gifts of His Holy Spirit so that we will use them to build and serve His church and people. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Look at this. The Holy Spirit displays God's power through each of us as means of helping the entire church. I want you to get to God's power wants to flow through every single believer, every single man and woman because he needs you to help his church. If he's going to build his church, if he's going to heal his church, if he's going to deliver his church, he needs a fi the fire of his spirit flowing through somebody. See, God is saying, I'm not just giving you my spirit so you feel good. I'm not just giving you my spirit so you overcome your flesh. I've given you my spirit so I could talk through you, so I could work through you, so I could heal through you, so I could deliver through you. Come on, there's a world out there that needs deliverance. There's a world out there that needs breakthroughs. There's a church that needs to be built up. God is saying, I brought you here, not just to receive, but I brought you here to use, come on, to be used by God's spirit so his power flows through you. Let's finish reading the list real quick. One person, the spirit gives ability to wise advice. All of a sudden, you start giving advice that's beyond your ability. You're like, I don't know if that's smart. Woo. It wasn't you. It was the Holy Spirit talking through you. Stay connected so he keeps, keeps on doing it. Don't get prideful. You know it wasn't you. You could barely read. Someone else may be especially good at studying and teaching. And this, his gift, this is his gift from the same spirit. Verse 9, he gives special faith to another and to someone else the power to heal the sick. He gives power for doing miracles to some and to others power to prophesy and preach. He gives someone else the power to know whether evil spirits are speaking through those who claim to be giving God's messages or whether it is, the real, it is really the Spirit of God who is speaking. Still another person is the ability, the able to speak in languages he never learned. And others who do not know the language either are given the power to understand what he's saying. 
It is the same and only Holy Spirit who gives all these gifts and powers, deciding which one of us should have. You know what's so great? These gifts are for you. And all he's saying, if you'll just get involved ministering, not just receiving, but joining the church as an usher, praying for people, discipling people, bringing people underneath your wing, going to visit in the hospitals, going to the prisons. This is what he's saying. My spirit, my power will begin to manifest through you and you don't even know what's going to happen. Someone might get healed, set free. All of a sudden you start walking in wisdom you never had. You start teaching and preaching in a, an ability that's not your own, but it's God's spirit speaking through you. You start getting supernatural faith that you believe that you can do anything. And it's almost like faith to walk on water. You say, how come I can walk on water right now? Because you, you've been given the gift from the Holy Spirit to have faith to walk on water. Now you start doing things you can never imagine and people start saying, I know God is real because I've seen him work through you. God is saying, when you're walking in my spirit, my spirit is working and talking and do miracles through you. Let's give God some praise. Let's all stand up. I just had to get through everything. You guys got this so far? Okay. How do you walk in the spirit? Number one. You got to make it a habit and do it intentionally. It's going to be something that's going to develop. The Holy Spirit's going to lead you, you're going to follow. He's going to lead you, you're going to follow. Just like when you were led by your flesh, now you're going to be led by the Spirit. He's going to empower you, He's going to give you desires. That's how you overcome the lust of the flesh. Do not overcome the lust of the flesh on your own strength. You have overcome the lust of the flesh by yielding. And then you develop, someone say, a habit. Are you guys ready to start a new habit today? Of pleasing the Lord. Are you ready to work on this? Come on. We're going to work practice. You're born with legs. But you only learn how to walk through practice. Okay. Number two. What is number two? Make the Holy Spirit your best friend. Focus on making the Holy Spirit your best friend. Some of us, is a new concept. Like, oh, wait thought about that. Holy Spirit, you're my friend. You're going to share everything you have. I'm going to, you're going to bless me, I'm going to bless you. It's going to be a good friendship. We're going to walk together. Be with me all day long. He goes, I am. I love you. I just want you to acknowledge me. I'm here. Imagine how many times the Holy Spirit, is, he wants to be our friend. He's offering us friendship and we're ignoring him because we're just busy with life. Have you ever done that? I have. Just busy. Have you gotten so busy you don't have no time to read the Bible, pray? Some people you're gonna get to a point, you're so busy you can't even come to church no more. So busy with the blessings that God gave you. Now you're friends with the world and you're not friends with God no more. Okay? And number three, how do you walk in the Spirit? Allow the Holy Spirit to speak and minister through you to others. That helps me. It's hard not to walk in the spirit. I remember me and Lisa were, before we got married, I made up my mind that I wasn't going to kiss Lisa. I kissed her before, but I realized I was being controlled by the desires of my flesh. It was taking me to places that were not like Jesus. I don't know if you've ever been there. Trying to live right, but I can't be making out with a girl and grinding on her and expecting me for, to all of a sudden, Holy Spirit. So I realized I was asking for strength. God, give me strength to overcome, overcome this. He goes, you don't need strength. You need to cut it off and walk in the Spirit. So I told her, I go, Lisa, this is practicing. I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit told me, I can't kiss you again until we get married. I'm not even going to hug you straight up. I'll hug you from the side, but that's it. From here on out, we're going to do ministry together. And then one day we'll, when we're married, we could be with each other. But right now is the time, not the time for that. The time is to build a foundation. I was being led by the Holy Spirit. So, so now I started going on dates with Lisa, and there were ministry dates. 
And me and Lisa would go to a convalescent home and visit senior citizens. And we'd go over there and sing songs and pray for them and love the people. We weren't even tempted. The temptation was no longer there because we were busy doing the work of God. You can't be doing the work of God and have temptation at the same time. It's two different flows. Say, Pastor, was it easy? It was super easy because once we started walking in the spirit, the temptation of the flesh was no longer there. It was super easy. You know why it's hard? Because we're trying to play. We're trying to see how close we could get to the world without going over. Like, how close can I be a friend of the world? To be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of God. Okay, so, so we just did that. So I made the Holy Spirit. I'll tell you this. Because I made the Holy Spirit my priority, leaning on Him, my wife now is my best friend. You know, they would say, was your Holy Spirit your friend? The Holy Spirit is my friend. And this is what I... When I say, man, he's my best friend, I need to work still at that, I think. Because I think if I thought he was my best friend already, I think I would stop like, I, I know I could be way better friends with the Holy I think he's a great friend. I don't think I'm that good a friend sometimes. Right? Can I admit this to you guys? Why? Because we're all in the same boat. Amen? Come on. So let's do this. Tonight. This is going to be simple because this is a decision. The Holy Spirit wants to be your friend. I'm telling you, when he's your friend, you'll start hearing him speak. You'll start getting dreams. He'll start directing your life. You're going to start having joy, self-worth, confidence. The fruit of this, the Holy Spirit is going to produce gentleness, love, self-control. People are going to say, man, you're different. You know what the difference is? We're being led by the Spirit now. You've been a Christian for 20 years. I know, but I wasn't being led by the Spirit. I finally being led by the Spirit. This feels good. I'm blessed. I'm joyful. I got peace when I put my head on the pillow. I can sleep. It's good. I got self-control. People don't control my emotions like the way they used to. Alcohol don't have no power over me. Drugs don't have no power over me. A woman has no power over me. A man has no power over me. I'm in a good place. I've seen God use me. I've seen signs, wonders, miracles. I've seen demons being cast out. I've seen I'm laying hands on the sick. They're starting to recover. I'm preaching the good news. People are getting saved. This is a good life. How many want that kind of life? Come on, church. Amen. So tonight, we're just going to yield quick. But if you're saying, Pastor, that's to me. I'm intentionally making a decision tonight to make walking in the Spirit a habit. Number two, to make the Holy Spirit my best friend. And I'm going to start saying yes to ministry. I'm going to start opening my mouth boldly. Even I'm not going to let fear stop me. I'm going to start sharing my faith. I'm going to start inviting people like I've never invited. God, I want you to use me. There's someone sick. It's a sign that I'm supposed to pray. I will visit my family. I'll visit my friends. I'll visit my co-workers. If they're sick, come over here. Let's pray right now. I love, God loves you. He loves you. Let me pray for you. You start praying for them. You start witnessing to them. You know what they're going to say? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They're going to start seeing God. They're going to start coming to church with you. You're going to have a Bible study in your home. Because God's going to start using you. People are going to start getting, come on. You're going to start seeing the spirit of God move in your home, in your life, in your kids. Saying that's me, Pastor. You say, Pastor, I'm ready to surrender all. Tonight, I'm gonna walk in the Spirit. If you're saying I'm gonna walk in the Spirit, come up here real quick. I mean, I don't know how many people are gonna come. I'm walking the Spirit. I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna walk in the Spirit from here on out. Just walk up here real quick. 
I'm going to walk in the spirit from here on out. I'm going to walk in the spirit. I'm ready to walk in the spirit. And while you're walking up, it is what you're doing. You're just exercising your faith. The Holy Spirit, come on, you're, you're shaking hands with the Holy Spirit. He wants to be your best friend. You're saying, yes, yes, Lord. I want to be your best friend. I want to walk in the spirit. I, I want to make walking in the spirit a habit. I've had some bad habits, but tonight those habits are going to be broken because there's going to be a new habit that's beginning tonight. Your friends aren't going to recognize you. You're not going to recognize you. You're going to develop this relationship with the Lord. Every day you could have joy. Every day you could have peace. Every day you could minister. Every day the power of God could flow through you. Every day you could live more and more like Jesus. Come on, if there's going to be a revival in, the, in this city, it's going to be through, come on, through men like you saying, God, work through me. Guide me. Lead me. Okay. It's still making room now. As you came forward, it's not this area is especially anointed or powerful. What's anointed and powerful is spirit in you able to move you. Because that's what he wants to do is move you. Let's go. Let's go. And before you know it, you and the Holy Spirit, boom, 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 in stride. Every step that you're taking is a power stride in the spirit. You have to learn how to walk in that. Walk in step with the spirit, okay? We could do this. We could do this, okay? So now when you made a decision to move from that chair to here, this is all you're doing for the rest of your life. You're letting the Spirit move you. And then it's going to become a habit. You know you had some habits or other stuff moved you. And understand, if you don't walk in the Spirit, those things will continue to move you. He said, I'm not a really good, uh, maybe the Holy Spirit's not living in you. Stop letting the devil mess with your mind. You have the Holy Spirit in you, but you don't have to now walk in the Spirit. And then you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen? You're going to get to the point that those temptations that you've been struggling with aren't going to be temptations anymore. And then there's going to be a thought that comes to you that's going to tell you, how about trying it again? You don't even have a desire, but something is, is the devil's going to try to tempt you to do something you have your desire for. It's all a trick. Nah, nah. I rebuke that thought in the name of Jesus. I walk in the spirit. Now, if you fall, what do you do? I just miss a ground ball. That's all. Give me another one. Throw me another pitch. I might have missed that one. But throw. I fouled that one off. Not good enough. Give me another one. Let's go. Don't, don't worry about that. Give me another one. I'm going to hit line drive right now. Let's go. Elbow up. Come on, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up until I start hitting some line drive. And then I get to the point, come on, that I'm hitting more line drives, that I'm striking out. There's something happening. I'm starting to make some contact. Something shifted in my life. No one becomes a professional hitter without missing a lot of balls. You're never going to become good at this until you just practice it. Reading the word on a daily basis. Come on. Repenting of your sins. Getting back on track. Holy Spirit. You're, I, you're my best friend. Say, Holy Spirit. You're my best friend. Holy Spirit. You're my best friend. You bless me, and I bless you. Oh, man. Okay? Let him walk through you. You know that, that God gave Jesus, God gave Jesus, when he was on earth, God gave Jesus the Holy Spirit and power. The same Holy Spirit that God gave Jesus is the same Holy Spirit he gives you. That's crazy. And the Bible says he went around doing good works and healing the sick and those that were demon possessed were being set free that same holy spirit he gave you the only difference between jesus and us jesus walked perfectly in the spirit we're still learning how to walk in the spirit amen come on we, come on god's going to use you 
Step out of faith. We're going to have opportunities. Raise your hands. Let's surrender. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There was a group of 120 leaders in the Old Father in the New Testament that waited in the upper room with four, 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 your focus on the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that right now, Father, as your men are raising their hands in one mind and one accord all over this building, I thank you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will fill every single one of them with fire. And I thank you, Lord, that the work you started in them, you will complete. I come against every spirit of complacency every spirit of doubt, every spirit of unbelief, every spirit of lust, every spirit of addiction, every spirit of anger, I command you, in every spirit of backsliding, I bind you and I command you to leave them. And I thank you, Lord, Father, that spirit, those spirits are leaving and you're filling the void with your Holy Spirit. Fill them with your fire, fill them with your fire, fill them with your fire, fill them with your fire. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Fire of the Holy Spirit. Fire the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Rava Satarvasia. Oh, Rivere de Becaria Ravasai. Shere de Becanda Ravasia. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, flow, Father. They will do it through your spirit, not by might, nor by power. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. A new beginning, a new level, a new level. There it goes. Come on. It's my spirit that's called you. It's my spirit that started to work in you. I've called you to preach my word. I've called you to lay hands on the sick. I've called you to evangelize. I've called you to, I've called you to speak. I've called you to speak up. I've called you to live for me. It's my spirit living in you. There it goes. There it goes. Oh, we repent. We repent of all of our sins tonight. We repent of all of our sins. We turn to you. Forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your spirit. Thank you, Lord. You'll never leave us or forsake us. Oh, thank you, Lord. Say, Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I repent of all sin to follow you for the rest of my life. I thank you, Lord. Today, I pursue you as my best friend. Thank you, Jesus. Use me to preach, to tell others about you, to minister. May your power flow through me to touch others. Thank you, Jesus. I'll never be the same again. I'll never backslide again. If I fall, I'll get back up following you and being your friend is my main goal in the name of Jesus I pray amen let's give the Lord some praise come on church the guys let's give the Lord some praise let's give the Lord some praise let's give the Lord some praise guys with you and God you and God you and the Holy Spirit, you're always more than enough. Okay. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. You're walking, you're running the race that God has set for you. And even if you felt like, man, I haven't run this race well, with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will supernaturally empower your running that you will catch up with stuff you felt like I'm out of time. And God says, no, you're not out of time. Because I can make up for lost time. There's a story in the Bible that I read this morning. A story in the Bible where Elisha, Elijah, I mean. The Bible said the Spirit strengthened him. And he ran faster than a chariot and horses. And he got to the town before the chariots and the horses. Not because he could run fast. It's the Spirit strengthened his running. The Holy Spirit's gonna strengthen your efforts. It's gonna be, it, the stride is gonna be different. The results are gonna be different. And you're gonna give all honor and glory. And you're gonna say, this, I, I just realized now. Stop letting the devil condemn you and stop comparing yourself to anybody else. You just walk in the Spirit. And if you walk in the Spirit, everything that's coming to you is coming to you. No devil, no person can ever stop coming for it. It's coming to you. Okay. I want to see you here. 
Sunday. And if you're not working, Wednesday. And if you're not working, Tuesday. Why? Because you got to start practicing walking in the Spirit. Some of you guys have spent all weekend long in a club. Why don't you spend all weekend long in church? You gotta, we got to stop, stop being casual Christians. And we got to be sold out on fire. I'm all in. People say, you, you know you're not even all in until your family starts saying stuff. So what's wrong with you? What's going on? You join a cult? I didn't join a cult. I just got on fire for Jesus. I just realized I'm, I'm done being lukewarm. I'm sold out for Jesus. No, no thanks. I don't need that drink anymore. I, I, come on, I, I made up my mind. I'm done with that. I'm drunk in the Holy Spirit now. How many believe you could be drunk in the Spirit? Like you spend time with the Lord, you come out of the, I'm feeling good. That's how I felt uh, this morning. I just came out of feeling good, like peace. I just, my wife said something that just got in my nerves. I said, no problem. She just looked at me like, all right. Because no problem. I love you, baby. She goes, she, she didn't say what's wrong with you. It's not like always I act up, but. But I'm, what I'm saying is, she, she didn't have to say it, but I knew within me, that was good, Marco. Come on, isn't it great that you start walking the streets? Well, that was a good one right there. No one knows, come on, no one knows how far you came in that conversation. No one knows how far you came to come Friday night to church. No one knows how far you came when you said no to that thing that you used to say yes to. But God knows, and you know. Come on, let's give God some praise. We're going to accomplish things that we never accomplished. Get ready. Let's sing. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do a worship. We're gonna do a praise song. End this thing. Hi. You know you could do this at home. Sometimes you gotta get crazy at home too. You gotta say, "Devil, get out of my life." I'm walking with the Holy Spirit. And neighbors say, "Wait, wait, wait." Your wife or your friends say, or "Your neighbors say, what's up?" I'm not, don't get in my business right now. I'm walking in the Spirit. Amen. Come on. There's time that you gotta speak louder than the voices in your head. Come on. Let's go.